Assalamu alaikum. We are continuing to read about the life of our Prophet Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Just to enjoy the fruits of having iman, belief in Ahl Sunnah. Before we continue, I want to read again from the book Ethics of Islam. It is reported unanimously that disbelievers will never enter paradise and will be punished in hellfire forever. If a disbeliever would live in the world forever, he would intend to live as a disbeliever forever. Therefore, he deserves punishment forever. Allah Ta'ala is the creator and owner of everything. He has a right to do anything he wishes. No one has the right to question him why he does this or why he does that. Let us continue. When Malik, the angel Malik, uncovered the layers of hell, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said he saw all of the seven layers. The seven layers are called Hariya. Its torment was much more than the other layers. I asked Malik, which group is tormented in this layer? Malik replied, the Pharaoh, Quran, and Munafiks, the hypocrites of your ummah, are tormented here. The sixth layer is Lazi, polytheists, those who are irreligious, are tormented here. The fifth layer is Hutama, Gebers, worshippers of fire, worshippers of oxen and Buddhists are tormented there. The fourth layer is Jahim, in there those who worship the sun and the stars are tormented. The third layer is Sakar, Christians are tormented there. The second layer is Sa'ir. Jews are tormented there. The first layer is hell, Jahannam. Its torment was less than the torments of the other layers. Despite that, I saw 70,000 seas of fire there. Each sea was so large that its worlds and heavens are thrown into one of them, and if one angel is appointed, it wouldn't be possible to find them, even if 1,000 years pass. The Zabanis, the angels who are in attendance in hell, was so great that if one of them put the worlds and firmament in one side of his mouth, they would be invisible. When those seas became rough, fearful sounds would be heard. If a little of that sound came to the world, all the living things would be destroyed. I asked, for which group is this layer? Malik didn't answer. I asked again. He kept silent. Jabul told Malik, he is waiting for an answer from you. He replied, excuse me. I said, whatever it is, answer so that it will be possible to find a solution. Malik answered, O oh, Rasulullah, it is for the disobedient of your community. Advise them so that they protect themselves from this horrible place and refrain themselves from the things that will lead them to this torment. That day, I will not pity the disobedient. I will not show compassion to either the old or the young of them. The master of the world started to weep. Taking his turban from his blessed head, he started to make intercession and entreated Allah Ta'ala by mentioning the weakness of his umed and that they would not be able to endure such torment. So much so that Jabal alayhu as-salam and all the other angels wept together. Then Allah Ta'ala decreed, O oh my Habib, your honor and preciousness are high in my sight. Your prayer has been accepted. Be pleased. I've made you attain your desire. I give you such a rank that I forgive a good number of disobedient by virtue of your intercession. Until you say enough, O oh my Habib, Whoever obeys my orders is freed from torment and punishment. 
attains my mercy and has the honor of seeing me in paradise. I have made for you and your umet, your community, part of obligatory duty, 50 times of namaz, that is prayer, at nights and in the daytime. Our beloved Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, continuing, said, After that rank, then, I reached the ash, passing through the heavens. I came to the rank where Musa, alayhi wasallam, was. He asked me, What did Haq Ta'ala make fard for you and your umet? I said, He made fard for me to perform 50 times of namaz, that is prayers, for every day and night. Then he said, Go back to your rub and trade him to reduce it a little, for your umet cannot accomplish this. I experienced and examined the sons of Israel. Thereupon I went back to my rab and said, O oh my rab, please reduce this order a little for my umet. Then he reduced it by only five from the fifty times. I went back to Musa alayhi wa salam and told him he only reduced it by five times less. He said, Go back to your rab and treat him to enlighten a little more, for your umet cannot accomplish this. We'll discuss more about this subject when we meet again. Wa alaikum salam.